case study of implementing quality talk and project-based learning in undergraduate class to achieve personalized learning. Dr. Yeo, your okay. floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, just to check, can you see my slide now? Yes. Okay, then I start my presentation. Good morning, everyone, and sorry for the uh, technical issue just now. First of all, I would like to thank to ADAC and also the UM Lighter Grant for giving me the, uh, the grant and the opportunity to run the project and present the result of my uh, research today. So the topic of my presentation today is a case, uh, case study on of implementing quality talk and project-based learning in undergraduate class to achieve personalized learning. So first, uh, let me do a brief introduction on the undergraduate course that I have chosen, that is the Chinese in classical text. This is now an elective course, but soon in next year, uh, in the new cohort of the curriculum, it will be a compulsory course to all year one undergraduate students. So we can say that this is actually a basic course for Chinese studies students because it helps them to learn how to read and comprehend the text in ancient time. But what are the challenges that students facing uh, normally in this course? First, the range of the classical text is so huge, so it requires a large amount of knowledge. But how are they going to have a selective reading on it? And the second thing is, uh, in such a large time horizon, the ancient and the modern languages have been very much different. So st students will find it very difficult to understand. And uh, Dr. Yu, may I interrupt you for a, a while? Yeah. Would you like to click on the um, display slide, the icon, so that you can share the PowerPoint mode? Oh, um, I already shared, I thought. Yeah, 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 but it's not um, displayed as a slide presentation. Okay, I try again. Um, now I press it. Is it okay? Hi, Dr. Yeo. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm Umu here. Uh, can you, instead of, can you stop sharing first? Okay. I can you share there. your desktop instead? All right. Sorry, can I share my desktop now? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Okay. How about this? Okay, can you put on uh, PowerPoint's um, uh, presentation mode? Sorry. Okay, like this. Yes, yes. thank you. <laughs> Excellent, okay. Okay, I will not I, interrupt you anymore. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, let me continue, yeah? Yeah, uh, you so can. Just now we have already talked about uh, the contents of this course and the third uh, challenges that the students were facing that is they don't really notice what is the relationship between the text, the tools they learn to their life or to their experience. But in fact, we know that through the learning process, a person they should uh, required, they should learn a new knowledge, they should develop a new skills or form a new attitude. Then only they are able to uh, learn independently in the future and also to achieve lifelong learning. So now let's move to the our real teaching and learning context, that means in the class. So we will encounter another problems. All students are different, so they might differ in terms of the level of knowledge, their personalities, I mean, they are unique. So how should we as a teacher or say, uh, how, how are we going to design and run our class then? So with that in mind, I have decided to try out this combination of quality talk and project-based learning in my class with the aim to discuss whether this implica uh, implementation of both approach will bring a positive effect towards the personalized learning. So uh, what is quality talk uh, that I already mentioned a few times just now? So it is actually an approach to conducting discussions to promote students' high-level comprehension of text, where these high-level comprehensions refer to the critical reflective thinking uh, about or around the text. So this uh, quality talk, we can also say is a QT, is a collaborative project between the Ohio State University and also the Penn State University. 
So the uh, quality thought it actually comprises of these four elements, these four components. Uh, and uh, let, we can see here an idea instructional frame for discussion, the discourse tools, the instructional, fr uh, the teacher modeling and scaffolding, and also the pedagogical principles. So what each one means, uh, first one, the instructional frame actually refers to the teachers. They can decide the topic or the text while the student, they are given the dominance to do the discussion. And the discourse tools is uh, about the discussion elements that can, uh, we say, induce or promote the discussion among students. So teacher modeling and scaffolding means teacher can guide students to run the discussion that focusing on the text. And the last one is actually comprised of the understanding about language and pedagogy that we consider essential to uh, fostering a culture or a dialogic inquiry in the classroom. So if I just sum it up in uh, the quality talk is a uh, stress on the interaction and the talk. But many of the time in our, we say, flip classroom, students know, don't know how to discuss based on the text itself. So this is also why the approach of the flip classroom is often questioned by uh, investing too much time to interact and some even question if is it really helps the students to absorb content effectively and improve the learning outcomes or just for them to have a happy time. So the failure of the flip classroom was not because of the talk, but it actually depends on whether it is a quality talk or not. So what we can do to achieve the quality talk in the teacher's role, we are actually participating in this discussion. We encourage the students to speak, we guide them to discuss and hand over the dominance to them. While for the students' role side, they will discuss, they are doing the discussion. They will take turns to speak, to share their thoughts or opinions to the group members. So the thoughts they are sharing are logical are critics on the question and not towards the individual. If they are disagree, let's say, they, will, they can ask, oh, why do you think so? Or how do you know? So that they can provide more evidence. So since every student is unique, since every student is unique, each student, they will bring a unique perspective and contribution to the discussion, including their prior knowledge and personal experience. So after integrating all these perspectives, their experience, we'll find that each time the discussion is unique as well and will not be completely the same as other discussion in the same topic. Okay, so uh, next one is we just have a brief uh, uh, about the project-based learning because I, yesterday I, we, and the first day we saw that uh, some other presenters already talked about this project-based learning. So I just want to say that um, the project-based learning actually enables students they, to gain the knowledge and skills by working uh, for an extended period of time. They need to invest and respond to uh, complex question, the problems or challenges. Uh, and students have their own autom autonomy over the project, including what to do and how to do. So normally most of our course in university, we will give them assignments. But if the assignments was given at the very early stage of the semester, uh, the first week, let's say, then we ask students to submit it at the end of the semester or the last week of the course. It's actually more like a summative assessment rather than a formative assessment. So in project-based learning, I would say uh, uh, we should rethink, does our student given the learning process? Do they know how far they can still move forward to improve? And I think this is quite important. So we can see that uh, both quality talks and project-based learning are actually might help in the personalized learning. So this comes to my uh, research objective that is to uh, explore the suitability of implementation of the quality talk and project-based learning into an undergraduate course and also to identify the impact of quality talk and PBL towards the personalized learning. So 
I would like to present the results of research first before we proceed to the course design. So first of all, it's about the student's motive and the reason why they choose this elective course. So the result shows that about 75% of them, they are wish to increase uh, their ability to read the classical Chinese text, while the 56.3% of them believe that this is an important basic course. And indeed, yeah, it is. 37.5% uh, of them interest in this course, while the other 12.5%, they choose this course because, because they have no other choices anymore. So then we look at uh, their self-evaluation uh, about their mastering uh, or their level of Chinese in classical text. Uh, fifth, uh, half, of, half of them said they are intermediate level, while 31 and 18.8% of them think that they are weak and very weak respectively. Yeah, the very weak and uh, uh, weak. So if we compare to their self-evaluation again at the final week of the course, uh, in the question uh, when we're asking, after taking this course, uh, I feel that blah, blah, blah. So the 29.2% uh, of them said that they have improved a lot, while the other 70.8% said that they have improved. So the choices like uh, I have no, no improved at all or I don't understand that all, they didn't choose it. So here we also can summarize up some comments of the students regarding on the approach of the group discussion where we actually run the quality talk. The result shows that half of the students, they prefer to read articles by themselves. Nevertheless, most of them also feel that this discussion helped them to think and understand the article better, which reach about uh, 80, above 80, and 31.3 of them said they are more comfortable to ask questions in a group compared in the, uh, to the whole class. So we can also take a look at their opinion uh, about the project-wise uh, quiz and the video making. We have in total eight times of quiz. All of them think that uh, this part, I mean the quiz is a very necessary part that cannot be taken out if this course be open again. And for the video, uh, uh, compare with the group project, that is the video making, 81 point, uh, the result is uh, slightly different. 81.2 take it as an interesting project, while the 18.8% uh, feel that it's just no normal. So what we, what we can conclude here is, this batch of students, they have different style of learning. Their learning style is different. So some of them may, might prefer group activities, some prefer individual learning. And uh, we would also like to know which part in this course is the, the, the student like the most. So the answer is the, the, the discussion, the group discussion. So uh, we ask why the, the, the comments they give is, uh, I, I like this kind of teaching method. Uh, first, we can discuss and analyze, then uh, the teacher, the lecturer will uh, say something and then let the students to ask questions themselves and they answer. So uh, another student said we can exchange idea with each other and uh, some things that the group discussion can help better understanding of the content. So for the overall comments, um, they also said that uh, the right side is the, I have to translate the their comments into the English version. So they will say, uh, uh, it used to be a matter of guessing to read the classical text, but now it's easier to understand the meaning of uh, the text now. And some feel it's fun. Uh, they thought this course would be very boring, but it has benefited a lot. And the assignment is interesting. The contents are fruitful. They like the way of teaching. The atmosphere is relaxed and interactive. And it, the last result is our uh, exam. Uh, we can see that all CO, uh, all the course objective have been achieved and nobody feel in the course. So now, uh, we move to the course design. How I design the class, the assignments, and how we implement the quality talk and project-based learning into the course. So we have total of 14 weeks 
And due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our class has moved to an uh, online since week five. So the, the left side is the is the in class uh, uh the normal class in university and start from the week five we conduct it online. So uh for all the fourteen weeks we have six types of group discussion. Let's see here. I, we have six times of the group discussion, uh, and I. I play as the role as a teacher. I choose the selected article first and provide it with three to four small questions. So students side, they are divided into four groups uh, with four people in each group. Our class is actually a small class in total of 16 uh, students because our one batch student only got uh, 30. So I choose the selected text, then they make it in, uh, they form the group. Then they will read the article, followed by discussion. Then they will take turns to speak during the discussion, write down their ideas. Uh, even after we move online, they can still discuss in the breakout room of uh, Zoom and share their ideas on Jamboard or Google Docs. So uh, in the meantime, I'm not go to uh, any other relaxing, uh, uh, but I, I will jump in, in and out from their rooms and participate into their discussion. So the reason we do so is to promote their discussion. Uh, I would like to highlight here is that in during this quality talk, teachers, we are not play the role as a leader or the instructor, but just now we said participant. For example, if you notice there is one student who cannot catch up with other. So if you notice that, then we can take a clarifying action. We get the students uh, that keep talking to explain, re-explain with more details. For example, I say, um, I'm a bit confused uh, uh, just now about your argument. Can you make it clearer? Or when the whole group missed an important point. So I will sometimes jump in and say, oh, there are other groups who think so and so. So do you think this is correct? So lastly, they will present it. So uh, we, we got the intervention uh, during the whole uh, discussion. So here is the sum of the uh, outcomes of the discussion. This is uh, through the jump board. So you can see that everyone will put effort to answer some things or try to correct others. And this is when they are uh, do, conduct it in uh, the Google Doc. So for the project uh, part, we have divided it into two parts. One is the quiz, one is the video making. So uh, for this quiz, Students have to learn up to 20, uh, 200 common basic words in classical text, but we couldn't teach each word one by one in the classroom, so we conduct it in quiz. But the way we, we, we run this quiz is not we set the question, but we did set the question, but it's the second step. We provide them the material first about each uh, 30 words each quiz, mean each uh, week they will learn 30 words. So students themselves will read it and then they set three questions for each quiz and submit to the spectrum. Then we will, from them, from there, we will select 20 questions to form a quiz. The question was with, uh, we, we will uh, arrange it with the combination type of what we call a tense question and authentic question in quality talk approach means uh, some is very easy. We can just get the answer very quick and it's very direct. But the other one, uh, maybe you have to think or you have to apply or you have to link to others. Only you can answer. So we will, uh, we know if the time continue, uh, this first week, second week, maybe the third or fourth week, they will get uh, boring or or maybe they, 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 they can't complete it, then they will chin chai do it. But we will mark out and we will say highlight some good move of the students. So who did a good type of question, then we will take it out and say, oh, this is a quite a good example. So they will, uh, others, they will refine their way on how to asking the question. So this is also how we push them to achieve higher quality of question asking. So uh, last part is the video making. We set the assignment background the, the, for the video, uh, for the whole environment for this project. We said it's like a war of nations. 
So the students, they have to first uh, form their uni union by looking for another three members, three LE. So they will choose the topic they like. Then they will collect the data. They will plan what and uh, how they are going to present their video by drafting a proposal and script. We did ask for the proposal uh, as well. So uh, because we want to interference, uh, in, get, uh, make some intervention during their preparation. So they have to use all the knowledge that they have learned, uh, work with their peers, arrange the tasks. Then with the freedom we have given them, they can arrange the tasks according to their strength. So our role not, not yet finished here. We join in their Google Docs. We will discuss with them. Uh, sometimes if they need help, we might offer some help. So we we'll point. Uh, we were also pointed out if they, they are missing some important part or incomplete part. And oh yeah, we have set the rubrics as well. So on the 30th week, the second last week, all, video, all videos will upload on YouTube and they are going to watch all the videos and assess the video according, according to the rubrics we have said before. So we noticed that the marks they are given actually uh, quite, quite the same, uh, won't be a big difference on it. Uh, this is some of the uh, snaps uh, from the videos they are do doing or in Mandarin words. So in a conclusion, we can see that uh, what was actually happened along the process of discussion and project running. Uh, the, maybe the weaker students, they can learn from peers. If the stronger students, they can learn to teach peers. And most of the time they are discussing even debate, but it's all regarding on the text itself. So no matter what kind of stage they are on, no matter how, what level they, they are uh, standing, they will definitely learn the, in the process and getting better than before. That's why we get the result like I shown earlier. So all the activities that have been run in this class is all on HOTS, which is the high order thinking skills according to the Bloom's revised taxonomy. So they, they, they need, the students need to analyze, to evaluate, and to be creative in the class rather than just memorize, understand, and apply. So the conventional teaching and learning, they just require students to sit still, to keep quiet, to listen to the lecture. But our flipped classroom requires students to think, to talk, to participate in the activities, but not just for fun even though uh, it, it will get fun. So this is what we call student-centered teaching. So as a teacher, if we thought that our, uh, our workload will be lesser or easier, uh, then we are wrong. In fact, the course design have to be more detailed and more complete. So I will say we are actually also keep learning from students because the ideas from students may also promote our thinking they sometimes also help to identify some uh, mistake in our teaching. So as a, uh, as a conclude, uh, I say uh, uh, our research shows that this both quality talk and project based learning bring a positive effect to personalized learning. And now I, I know I can't go back to the previous time already looking at their sleeping eyes then continue lecturing uh, no I, we can't take it anymore so that's all for my presentation today and thank you thank you so much dr yu thank you very yeah. nice project i also enjoy looking at the <laughs> slides and the um, video that snapshot that your students uh, prepared. I'm sure they enjoyed the class as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, may I ask a small question? Whether yeah. you got the chance to, um, based on the students' feedback throughout the class, did you manage to um, make some changes or some, um, you changed some of your um, style or some of your delivery during the whole semester? Did you, did you get a chance to do that? Yeah, can, we can see 
sometimes they will say, first time, uh, at the first, we thought the group will be fixed, let's say, to get them more convenience with the group members. So we thought maybe we set the groups uh, for fixed. But after first and second weeks, we, we, the student will give feedback. They said, oh, yeah, maybe I'm not really comfortable with the way this student or that student. Then after that, we switch, we switch to the mode of like they can change their teammates every week. So they are uh, happy with that. And actually, this, this time, the second time I took this course is actually the second test already. Since last year, uh, the same one, we already get the grant. So we already uh, make a pilot test during the another class, another course. But that time we focusing too mainly on the uh, quality talk. And we noticed that we are more likely to teach them quality talk rather than the content of the subject. So we changed the, a bit and then it comes to the this time of the result. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Yo. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Prof. Yeah.